Hey, I'm Brad and this is Breva Creative. At Breva Creative, we love to try out different hobbies and finding easy, cheap ways where anyone can do them. Today we are going to look at screen printing. We are not screen printing experts to say the least, and if you know anything about the process of screen printing, you may know that it can be relatively complex and an ex and overall an expensive hobby. We were having some logistical problems trying to figure out how to film portions of this screen printing video, uh, mainly because part of the screen printing process requires a total dark room, which we really don't have a windowless room in our house that's big enough for that kind of total dark room. Um, from what I've researched, at home screen printing uh, without professional equipment can be done, but it has mixed results. Certain quote unquote UV safe lights, especially the cheaper ones that supposedly have little to no UV emittance, can still affect and essentially ruin your screen if you're not careful. It's a very delicate process and it's pretty hard for the average person to set up shop and get some really good quality prints without professional equipment. We luckily have found a way around all of the weird UV issues and stuff with the emulsion. So what we're gonna do is really quick talk about the traditional process of screen printing and then we will show you a simpler way to achieve it without the mess. First, regardless of what method you choose, you need your screen, of course, because it is called screen printing after all. Then you're going to need your actual design, which is usually printed out on a special film paper if you're using this method. Now here's where it gets a little bit complicated. For this method, you're going to need emulsion fluid coated evenly across your entire screen. This is the tricky part though because the emulsion can't be hit by any UV light at all or it will emulsify. So you need to be completely in a dark room with a UV free safe light so that you can see or in our case film what you're doing. Then you're going to overlay your design on the screen and expose it to intense UV light to emulsify everything except what's under your design. The, your design will block all of the UV light and will not block the rest. You'll need a special type of bulb for this so do your own research if you want to use this method. The next step would be to wash out your screen, remove the non-emulsified liquid that was underneath your design, and then once it's washed out completely, you need to let it dry uh, before you can start adding your ink. So this is what we're gonna be doing instead. You still need your screen and your design, but then you can use a Cricut machine to cut out your pattern on vinyl and then stick that design to your screen. So stick around to see if it works just as well as traditional screen printing. So what we're gonna try today doesn't involve the emulsion or the chemicals or the UV light or any of that gross stuff. What we're going to do is use our brand new Cricut machine to cut out a pattern in vinyl and then apply that to our screen and just print the ink through that. So I'm just going to pop a couple of photos into my vector graphics editor of choice. Here I am using Inkscape, which is a free downloadable software. Adobe Illustrator would also be a great program for this. From there, we're going to load our PNG image into the Cricut software and get it running. We are working with a single color print today, so we're just going to need one cut. So this is our new Cricut Maker machine that we bought used and we are absolutely loving experimenting and figuring out cool ways to use this new toy. If you're unfamiliar with what a Cricut is, it is essentially a motorized X-Acto blade. So it's sort of like a CNC cutter, but with X-Acto. So you can see here, I'm just applying some vinyl to the adhesive cutting board that comes with the, um, the Cricut and just getting that all prepped to print. So I've gotten all of the vector images loaded up into the Cricut program on my computer and now I'm just going to go ahead and load that board and get this cut started. So I'm not going into how to actually operate the Cricut because everybody and their mother has gone into that on the YouTubes and I don't feel that I need to for this specific video. If you are interested in us doing a Cricut tutorial video, let us know in the comments below. But any 
vinyl cutter will work for this. There are a couple different types of machines that can do this same thing. Cricut is just the one that I happened to find for myself. And when it's all finished, you just unload that board. I've been doing my weeding right on the board without removing the vinyl. This makes it a little easier. So you're just going to pull out the parts that you don't want in this vinyl. And for this, since we are screen printing, we are actually removing the parts that we want to have printed onto the final piece so that the ink can travel through the vinyl. So I did draw this cat vinyl as a duotone print, so I had it printing in the black and then orange because I have a calico, but today we're just going to do the single tone print. Let me know if you're interested in seeing more. Next we're just going to take some clear transfer vinyl and lay that on over top. This will allow us to pick up all of the little pieces of our print and transfer them to the screen easily. So now that I've carefully laid that clear vinyl over top, I'm going to go ahead and press it down and make sure that all of the green vinyl sticks to the clear vinyl so that I can peel it up off of the backing paper easily and without losing any little pieces. So I'm using this little scraper to do that. And then slowly and carefully I will pull up all of the adhesive bits off of that backing paper. I make sure that it goes slowly and press down if anything starts to separate in places that I don't want to so that I make sure that I pick everything up and it all stays in place. And then we're going to stick this onto the screens that we built. We built these screens out of wood in our shop and we're not showing that here, but we are going to show how we splined the screen into the frame. You can get these frames online, pre-splined, pre-stretched, but we wanted to do it ourselves. I think we have a short video that kind of shows how we did that. So. Hopefully Brad will link that here. We tested how tight the splining pulled that screen and that dime is jumping super high. So that means we have a nice tight screen and we can go ahead and trim off the excess to get it out of the way and get our vinyl laid down. Next, we're going to grab our pre-stretched screen and we're just going to center that print up to where we want it on the screen and place it down. And then again, you're just going to press down and make sure everything is fully adhered to the screen. You want to be careful though, not to push the screen out of the stretched, um, the stretcher. So I actually flipped it over and just pressed from the front so that I wasn't pulling the screen out of the frame. And once you have that all fully adhered and you're pretty sure that everything's stuck down, you I'm going to go back and start carefully removing that clear transfer vinyl. So I peel up one corner and just kind of slowly mark, work my way across, again making sure this time that everything sticks to the screen and doesn't pick up with the clear vinyl. And this actually worked pretty well for me. I've heard that you can also use just clear contact paper for this, um, but what I'm using here is a transfer vinyl that I believe is Cricut brand. Not a sponsor. Yet. And that pulled off really nicely. I'm super happy with that. Now we're just going to tape all of the edges and make sure that the vinyl will not start peeling up on the edges. And also make sure that any parts of screen that you don't want to actually print and any of the edges, make sure those are also taped down as well. Otherwise your ink will bleed into the frame and make weird bits and be a pain to clean up. So don't do that. We've got some screen printing specific paint. I'll put a link in the description of what we bought. And we're going to mix these colors just to try to recreate our logo color for this shirt. Mostly yellow and green with just a tad bit of white just to lighten it a little bit. And if you end up mixing colors like we did, make sure that they are very well mixed unless you're okay with a little bit of color differentiation on the final piece. Now we're going to just put a healthy amount of ink on our screen. Oh, wait a second. As I mentioned, we're total amateurs when it comes to screen printing, so we made a grave mistake here, but they still turned out good for our first attempts. You're supposed to flood your screen with the ink just to get an, a good even coat of the ink on your screen before you place it on your paper or your t-shirt. We didn't do that at all, and there were a few unpainted areas on our pieces. So here is our first test print with our logo. It's helpful to have a third hand to hold the frame in place while you squeegee over the design. With even moderate pressure, slide the squeegee over the screen at around like a 45 degree angle, probably a little bit faster than what we're doing here, but we're still in the learning process. You can see that it didn't coat the paper fully, 
So we kept the frame in the same spot, added a little bit more ink, and re-squeegeed it. You can leave any excess ink on your screen and just lift it up to see how your print did. The color is a little bit uneven in spots and it's a little bit splotchy on the upper V. We're going to mix our ink a little bit better and add more ink to the screen for the next go around. We did a bunch more tests on paper and finally got to a place that we were happy with. So we are now trying this on a shirt next. It came out a lot better, much more even color, no more splotchiness, clean edges, very, very happy with this first one. Since that one turned out so great, we confidently went on and tried it on another t-shirt. Unfortunately, this heathered gray t-shirt actually was a bit heavier cotton and absorbed more ink, so the print didn't come out quite as vibrant, but um, we had fun with it anyways. And we tried to do kind of a ombre effect with yellow to green here, and it turned out all right. Certainly not perfect, but we are still learning how to do this, and we are having a ton of fun marbling the ink with this one. I think it turned out super cool. So now we're gonna move on to the bigger print, which is the kitties. And this was tons of fun, but again, um, still in the learning process. There's some light bits where the ink didn't fully go through, and I think the flooding that Brad spoke about earlier would help with this, so we'll have to try that on a future screen printing video. But once you go over the screen print a couple of times and kind of get familiar with it, it works pretty well. We were super happy with our first time results with this and had a ton of fun experimenting with it and definitely recommend this if it's something you feel like you could get into, definitely give it a try. But also definitely experiment. There's lots of learning and you can tell we are on a learning curve with this. So um, I think we will get better and hopefully one day we will have shirts and merch and stuff on our website that we print ourselves. Keep an eye out for that. And one more amateur mistake. We didn't put any sort of cardboard or whatever between the first and second layer of our t-shirts. So on a few of them, the ink actually went through to the other side of the t-shirt. So don't be like us. Use cardboard. We tried removing the ink before we heat cured it, but we didn't have any luck. The next step before washing t-shirts is to heat cure them. We don't have any sort of fancy heat press devices, but we have an iron. Make sure that your iron is set to whatever type of fabric you are using and place a piece of paper between the t-shirt and the iron to protect it. And make sure that the ink is completely dry, obviously, before you do this too. We ironed each design for two minutes and it really worked for us well. Finally, throw your t-shirts in the washer and that should be it. So here's the finished product. This was lots of fun. We really enjoyed this process and it wasn't as complicated as we expected the whole emulsion UV thing to be. So you should definitely try it. And if you do, tag us at Reva Creative on social media. And of course, as always, comment, like, subscribe, follow us, and check out our new website, brevacreative.com and let us know what you think. Bye.